just just moved to uni, so it's been a bit stressful. But yeah, oh. got it all right now. Where where'd you go to? Like? Go to Teesside. I've just moved here. Um, I went to Sheffield last year. I did uh, physio, but then I didn't really enjoy it that much. So I've changed course and changed unis. So I've just literally just moved into there. What course are you doing now then? Power practice now. So yeah. same kind of like same kind of thing, but a bit more like tailored to what I'm interested in. Are you, you're staying in, uh, is Teesside, is the campus on like the Teesside Uni actually in yeah, yeah, yeah. Teesside? It's yeah, it's Teesside, it's in Middlesbrough. So I'm staying on, it's a place called Cornell Quarter, like one of the... Uh, accommodations like with like who were connected to uni so i'm just sitting in there it's not bad to be yeah. fair it's all right you're better still getting back that. to hope for your training then or what's the crack with that um so yeah so i'm currently training at hit squad uh, in hull um i'm gonna have to obviously change not change not i'm not gonna be changing gyms i'm still gonna be training there but um i'm gonna find there's a few gyms as well i think mfa uh tft that's nearby me and then up in Newcastle, there's uh, SPG South Shields, uh, North East Jiu-Jitsu. So I've got a fair few good gyms around me from, to choose from. So I've been I'm to gonna, MFA a few times. It's a good gym, like. Yeah, it's a good gym. So I've got my car. I brought my car up. So traveling is not really an issue. I'm still going to travel around. Like while I was at home uh, training in the Hull, uh, I was still training at like AVT in Leeds, Morley. So I was traveling about an hour for that anyway. And then on Saturdays, me and uh, George Staines, we go to uh gym in manchester called uh y club for wrestling so i still traveled even when i was in hull but now i'm just gonna travel a bit more get about yeah how often did you get yourself up to a uh, avt like i was the avt was for my last camp uh and then my previous fight before that was normally thursday fridays uh so i go for thursday we do jiu-jitsu with danny mitchell and jay Furness, uh and then sparring on fridays yeah. There's loads of good guys on there, so it's good bodies for me to train with. Just a couple of smaller guys as well, some lower weight, like high level guys, which is hard to find. Yeah, George is uh, obviously top ladders, top ladders as well. He's yeah. obviously coming coming from oh with you. <laughs> yeah, so he's, I train with him every day. So yeah, me and George always we move about and try and get the best like rounds and training we can really. But no, yeah. even though it's a small place, my head coach Stu and Sam Graham. Uh, Stu Graham and Sam Wilkinson they've just opened Hit Squad and like for a small place Hull like, it's got some good up and coming guys it's a good gym yeah what's the atmosphere there like when you're training oh, good. Uh, it's, it's like it's good because we're all mates so like we all like we all have a laugh and stuff but when it's time to work like we get to it so uh, it's, yeah. not, it's not easy like I love my coaches but I hate them at the same time as well because of course <laughs> it's, 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 it's all worth in the end yeah how did you uh, get started in the sport, mate, if you don't mind me asking? So I was, literally, I was three years old and I used to watch uh, the Ulmer fight with my dad and I used to watch Chuck Liddell. And I used to just be obsessed with Chuck Liddell when I was like four years old. <laughs> uh, like all the like, old school, like MMA guys. And I used to watch it with him and my mum used to get real pissed off at him. Like, saying, like I can't be watching this. So for my fourth birthday, I was like, I want, I want to do it, I want to start. So me and my two sisters. You know, a good a good role model when you're three years old, like. <laughs> yeah, that was the best role model to have. So yeah, me and my two sisters, we started when we were all four. Uh, well, I think my oldest sister was five. I was four, and then my younger sister, she started when she was four as well. So we all did that up through to being about thirteen at a place called Modern Day Martial Arts in Hull. So we all trained there, which is more like it was more like a ki- like a kid's place. Uh, and then we we did like gradings in there and got like MMA black belts, which obviously like don't exist, but like, it, you know what I mean? It was like just to show like levels and things. Uh, so I got myself one of them. Uh, and then my sisters, they didn't really, they went into it as much as me. They kind of just did it for more self-defense. So when they got to like 13, uh, both my sisters stopped doing it. And then I, I wanted to carry on, but I wanted to move somewhere for like more adult training. Uh, so I looked around and then, went to fight ministry which was a uh, gym in hull which is where my current coaches sam and Stu, were based but then they've parted ways ways now and they've set up their own gym so from being like 14 to pretty much now i've been training split between fight ministry and then last year we moved to hit squad but yeah. yeah all really the same guys so it doesn't feel like we've moved there's a lot of the same faces about and same coaches when you started training then you just started training like mma 
in general, yeah. not not like yeah, one aspect of it. No, so that's like obviously I think quite most people think I'm I don't know what they think I'm like a striker or whatever, but because I've, I've done MMA from being four, it's I've got an equal. I'm equally rounded in every area. I'd say. I've just always done mixed martial arts, never like specialised in an area. So I won't say I'm like a specialist, but like more of like a, a generalist. You know, I can do everything to a good level. Yeah. Is there any areas more? See, I feel like often you get might get called now uh, like more of a striker now because obviously then two first round yeah. uh, knockouts on your record, but you feel confident in all areas, do you? Yeah, yeah. So three first round knockouts and one, one submission, but I probably if I was going to say anything I was more of a grappler oh was it three sorry oh sorry I did yeah yeah three so my first fight was submission uh in I think that was 54 seconds or something like that it was all around a minute uh submission and then one knockout and then I fought Alan Barron lost that but it was a close fight uh just made a rookie mistake really just because it was like my first two fights lasted 50 seconds. So going into my third fight, I was like basically like a debut fighter. I didn't know, I'd not been hit and I didn't know like, didn't know what hurt, like leg kicks, didn't know the feeling, how like, I didn't really know how to pace myself or anything. So I was just hunting him down like, <laughs> like a maniac. But yeah, nah. So yeah, three first round knockouts, one submission. So yeah, it's going well. But I'd say I was more of a grappler, but I feel, I th- feel equally comfortable in all areas really. Yeah, I think I think like people can feel comfortable in certain areas in training, but when it comes to a fight, I think you always revert back to what you feel like most comfortable in. Like, yeah, George, he's got really good striking, but when he fights, he he wrestles a lot of the time. Whereas I, I kind of feel more comfortable just at the start keeping my distance and just feeling him out striking. Yeah, obviously you don't have. You said you revert back to what you used to, but obviously you don't have like a base style to sort of yeah, fall no, back to. So fall back to. So it's kind of just wherever. Wherever I feel the fight going, like I'm, I'm, I'm happy to go wherever the fight take wherever the fight goes. Just adapting the situation. So yeah, I wouldn't really say I'm any specific martial artist. Yeah, am I right in saying you had a bit of a break after that loss between uh, that loss and your next fight? Was that because of COVID? Yeah, so I had I uh, obviously I, I lost and I took a bit of damage in that fight. Not any like head damage or anything. It was mainly just leg kicks. My legs were pretty beat up and I realised I need to start checking kicks or get out of the way of them because the hair. I thought adrenaline would just carry me through it. But yeah, so I had a bit of a break after that to like heal up and get walking back because I literally couldn't walk for like two weeks. <laughs> like <laughs> my knee was rolling ball, it was real bad. So I healed up after that and then I wanted to get back in pretty much straight away. So I went, got back into training and then COVID hit pretty much not long after that because I, uh, I was about to like get a fight booked but then COVID hit. So there was no fighting, but I was still, I was, st- I went to uni. So I was basically, I had my first two fights were a flyweight. No, my first three flights were a flyweight. So obviously while I couldn't train, there was only like a, a small period where I couldn't actually train in the gym or anything. It was about a month. I just focused on, I ate loads of food, absolutely loads and just lifted <laughs> loads of weights. Cause I was like, oh, I want to put on a bit more size. Cause I was a small flyweight really. I was, I, was, I used to walk around at like 60 kilo. So I just lifted a load of weights ate a lot of food and bulked up a bit so I then moved to Bantamweight after that but yeah that period obviously I couldn't really train or do as much as I wanted to so yeah I had a bit of like a a layoff but I was always developing like in that time I was always improving yeah even though I was, I that. I, I, uh, over the Covid period were you able to sort of get a lot of was that that period when you were bulking at uni lifting weights or was it yeah that was when I was at uni so when I was at uni I was like all I was doing for training really was just hitting pits in uh, pads with my mate one of my mates could hold pads did like a bit of boxing before so he just held some pads for me and we had like uh we ordered loads of plumbing weights offline in his uni kitchen so we'd just go in there and just just lift a lot of weights <laughs> that's all I, do, yeah. I was doing like calisthenics as well like all like body weight exercise and stuff and then still running and things but yeah while I was at uni it was like a period for about a month two months where I couldn't actually get any proper training it was killing me so I eventually moved back home uh, and started training again, like behind closed doors. It was just like a couple of guys that like, would come in and we'd all, tr- like me, George, Stu, uh, a couple of us, we'd all get training there. So once the ball got rolling again, then yeah, it didn't stop. Just just kept yeah. training. Like, it's good you didn't have to have like too long after space. Like loads of people have like 
the months were like training in the garage and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't too bad. It was like two months. I had a bit of a blowout at uni. Just like had a good time for a bit and then just lifted loads of weight. So, uh, yeah. And when it when the, everything opened again, I, it was it was time to go back to work. I had too long just just having fun. <laughs> it was bad. Yeah. You look at at the start of each of your fights. You look a uh, very uh, stoic. You look quite uh, confident. Is that yeah. are you confident on the inside or is that is that all on is that all the front? I'm, I'm always I'm always confident. I get more confident like the closer the fight gets, the more confident I get. Like when I fight when I first like obviously book like and start, not starting but like agree to do the fight. That's when the nerves kind of get me more like initially saying yes. But once I've said yes, I just I just do. The way I think about it is if, if I train and put 100% in and do everything that I know I can and I don't cut any corners and slack in any areas, then I can't be a nothing but confident. If, I'm, if I've done everything that I know I can, and I don't lie to myself. I'm, I know if I've slacked or, like, do you know what I mean? I don't, I, don't, I don't bullshit myself. So if I've done everything that I need to do and everything that's asked of me, I go in there just, yeah, with a confident mindset that whoever's in there with me is just not good enough or not, not worked as hard as me and not put as as much time and effort that I have because I've been doing this a long time. I, I'm, I'm only 20 years old. I've tra been training for 16 years. So I've been training a long time. Yeah. So, so I'm always um, yeah. cool as a cucumber. <laughs> yeah. The only, the only time I, I, I was confident in the Ellen Byron fight, but the that, in that fight, I was going in trying to knock him out. I was trying to, I was trying to finish him straight away. Uh, like due to inexperience. And that's the only time I've not got a finish in like pre- quick so after that fight I learned like it was more more like mature and it matured me a lot and I realized I've just got to go in there and just like now I go in there and I just I'm thinking of nothing I just like I'm just reacting to like what happens in there I'm just like not thinking about what I'm throwing I'm just so it's quite it's weird it's like an out-of-body experience I'm just I'm just in there just doing it like with not really thinking about it it always seems weird after like I finish and I'm like bloody hell I've just, I've just had a fight it doesn't feel like I have it's strange yeah I well, hope you still keep to the game plan. You're not completely reacting. <laughs> no, yeah, no. So obviously, I'm just sticking to the game plan, but like, yeah, I'm just not really thinking when I'm in there. I'm just trying to just be on autopilot. Yeah, sounds like it all sort of comes from the preparation for you. So, so complex yeah. all the preparation you've done. Yeah, yeah. I've, I know. I've, like, I was training twice a day, like minimum twice a day for like six, six, seven days a week, really. And I was, I just and all the things I've done up leading to the fight are going to come out like I don't have to think about it they just come out when you know the time's right in the fight yeah well yeah like it, you've, done, you've done it so much it's just sort of in, instinctual like yeah it's just like muscle memory like just reacting I don't think I think if you go in there and you're thinking too much that's when you you think and then you second guess yourself and you've waited too long and then you know what I mean you're on the back foot already you've, I just go in and I just start fast and just like I just probe and wait for them to like throw things back to me yeah, so. no, it's it's good that you're so so confident in yourself. It doesn't sound like there's any sort of self self doubt in you. And like you say, if you self doubt when you would like to throw a punch or whatnot, it's then you're hesitating and sort of maybe yeah. you, some people. No, fall the, only, the only way I have self doubt is if I've slapped in training, if I've gone through camp and you know taken time off when I didn't need it and slapped with my diet and everything. So if if I I know if I've done everything, I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna get the win. So I'm not, I'm just fully confident when I'm in there. Obviously, like yeah. on fight, fight day nerves, like they get me a little bit, but again, the closer it gets to the fight, when, once I start warming up, it's like my pre-fight routine. I have like a bit of caffeine and then get warming up. And then once that's all all kicked in, I'm just, I'm ready to go. Yeah. Now we're out of that sort of uh, like COVID period now. We're back to, you know, sort of fights, promotions being back on like regularly again. You want yeah. it to get back sort of fighting as, as much as you can. Yeah, hundred percent. So I thought uh, I've forgotten the date. To be honest, it was like about only about a month ago. Um, August seventh of August was my last fight. Not, yeah. Well, I was, was going to say your last fight weren't that long ago, or was it? Yeah, no, that was seventh yeah. of August, and then this one was eighteenth September. I was meant to have one on the sixteenth of October, but I've just had to pull out of that because my my hand's broken. Like, oh, the, uh, the the BMF one. Yeah, yeah, I have to pull out of that because oh, my hand's broken. So, yeah, I didn't know about that, man. I was gonna ask you about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gutted, really. It's a bit <laughs> annoying, but yeah. So in in the Harry Kenworthy fight on the seventh of August, that was when I popped my knuckle. Like it was the punch was like thrown like downwards, so I connected all on like my first knuckle, 
and after that it was swollen and like I didn't I didn't get it x-rayed but I was pretty sure it was broken like I, it was just swelled up massive and I couldn't really move it off it a glove on so I just kept training I didn't really throw on my right hand properly all camp like I just did like jiu-jitsu a bit of pads but just with like tapping real light and then any sparring uh, I had to do it in like boxing gloves so I didn't get many MMA rounds in so the preparation to be fair for my last fight won't it wasn't ideal. Like that's I was, I was probably the most nervous I've been for a fight in my last one because just because it wasn't perfect. You know, I, I couldn't really throw my right hand and I couldn't spar like how I wanted to spar because I was always thinking about it. Like it yeah, hurt whenever I punched, I didn't want oh, to. Sorry, I, I thought you were saying you'd actually done it in the fight, but it was in the coming yeah coming up to it. Yeah, no, it was in my last fight. It was in the Harry. It was in the Harry Kenworthy fight that I did it, and then I just kind of yeah. posted through the camp and tried to minimise like as much as I could on it, and then. But yeah, I just I was warming up with Stu and I was like, I can feel it. I was like, my hand's gonna break, or you know, I'm gonna do it again. So yeah, it's pretty pretty swollen and painful at the minute. I can't really get a glove on, but I'm still training, just doing other, like other stuff around it. Yeah, uh, like, do you know if you've done any serious damage to it? Like that? Uh, I'm not sure. I need to go and get scanned, but I can't get a glove on it at the minute. Uh, it's pretty. Well, you can see on there, but it's pretty yeah. pretty fat. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not, not good, but I don't want to, you know, I, I, I could probably make it to the fight or, I'll, like, the fighter in me says, like, oh, I can just do it again, I'll just coast through camp and, I, and I'll, I'll make the fight and, because I'm confident I can still go in there and win, but I don't want to, I don't want to go through and then, like, have a reoccurring injury, you know, of my whole career where it gets better and then, mm. I don't, I don't need to, like, have a reoccurring injury. There's no rush, so I'm just going to let that heal and then once that's healed, I'll be back in there. Just focus on probably jiu-jitsu for the rest of the year. Get some growth yeah. in tournament. Yeah, hopefully, uh, so no, obviously heals as soon as possible, man. Yeah. I'm do, you, do you compete that. in the grappling much? Yeah, so I did, uh, competed about uh, just before, no, it was just after, so I fought Harry Camp, uh, Kenworthy and then I went on holiday for a week and then came back and then did a did a grappling tournament and I got I got bronze in the last one I did. But there were some good guys like Mohammed Mocket was in my division. There were some good, good good dudes in my division. But yeah, I want to get back in there. Uh I, I like grappling. It's like one of my favourite sides of the whole martial arts. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna look into do I think there's em, there's an empire coming up, I think. Uh and all stars. I probably want to get on both of them. Yeah. And I don't have to wait for them. I can just do it at whatever weight because it don't really bother me grappling too much. I just don't want to have to cut weight again because I don't like cutting weight. <laughs> I like my food. How much weight have you, do you normally have to cut for a... Uh, obviously, you cut a bit less now, now you've moved up a weight class. So. Um, yeah, so I normally, it depends on like my lifestyle and how greedy I'm being, but like I walk around now at about 68 kilo. I walk around about 68, but I'm like got a fair bit of fat on me, like I'm quite stocky. But then, like, I cut down to about like sixty four ish, and then maybe I get I get, just get a low, as low as I can, and then cut a little bit of water. But it's the band and weight cut is really easy. It's not. It's like two weeks of just like just looking at what I'm eating and stuff, and a bit of dedication. It only takes around two and a half weeks. Uh, flyweight cut now. I've not made flyweight since obviously bulking up and because I put, did put on a fair bit of muscle, so I haven't made flyweight since then. But I'll definitely be able to do it. It'll just be like a proper cut, like a pro pro kind of yeah. cut. Do, do you think you plan on going back down then, or you... yeah, yeah, I think I think so because every like every camp I have at bantamweight, I can like I see, obviously just along with the cut, like I, I lose a bit of muscle. Uh, so this my most recent fight, I want I want big, I want as big as I was like about a month ago. I lost a bit of muscle from the cut in that, but it don't really bother me to fight. I'm strong enough to fight a Bantamweight. The reason I fought a Bantamweight is because I want to get in, I, got, I want to get more experience. So I want to be able to fight up regularly. Whereas Flyweight, I wouldn't be able to make the weight as regular. But when I'm getting to like the level, I'm, you know, like title contention or anything like that, I, I, there's some big boys at Bantamweight. <laughs> I'm like quite small really. So yeah. I'll, probably go, I'll probably go to Flyweight because that's really my division. I just wanted to get in some quick fights without having to like drain my body too much so I can you know go back straight into camp yeah obviously uh, as soon as you've healed up uh, your previous fights they're all in a almighty FC weren't they yeah yeah where do oh, you uh, like... where do you see yourself fighting in the future <sighs> to be fair I'm, I'm open to whatever really so yeah five fights in the almighty cage so I still want to fight an almighty but I was supposed to be doing the BMF uh, BMF thing but I'm open to fighting any promotion, really. It's more, 
it's not the promotion I'm looking at. Obviously, it's, it's nice fighting on All Might because it's so well run. Like, it's down, it's professional and it's all organised, you know. Everything's always, like, on point. So I like the fight on there, but I'm, I'm up to fight on anyone's show, really. Whatever and whoever. Just, obviously, now we've been racking some wins together now. Uh, like, going to be looking at high-level competition and hopefully some belts. So, yeah, I'm easy to fight wherever, really. Whatever yeah. organisation. Do you like the look of uh, Cage Warriors? So uh, obviously, as you get higher up the ranks and getting yourself over towards the big promotions. Yeah, hundred percent. I think that's the route to go. Like, if you're an English fighter, it's probably it's the cheapest because you obviously don't have to I mean, go abroad or anything. You can just live at home. So yeah, eventually, when I go pro, which I'm not too sure about, like which what age I want to go pro at, like I'm an um, um, now, but probably about 22, 23, probably like a couple of years at amateur getting some more experience because I've had obviously five fights but if you add up all my wins they're under a round so I've, I've only really had like four rounds yeah. experience so I've fought two and a half nearly three rounds uh, in my loss and then all my wins are under a minute and then one minute 12 so I'm still like I'm not inexperienced I've been doing it a long time but I, I want to like I want a three round fight I want like I'm not a war because I don't, I don't want to take damage I think it's a bit stupid when people are like, oh, I want a war. <laughs> I don't see why you'd want to get hit. Like, I don't want a war, but I want, I want like, three hard-fought rounds like, in face adversity. So, hopefully, I'm going to get that in my next couple of fights. Mm. I'm sure. Yeah, it's like, it's like, when I mean, find it funny people say, oh, he's, he's got a great chin. It's like, <laughs> like, what he says is he's great at taking punches. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't want to be known for having a good chin. I just want to be known for going in there, taking as little damage as possible and getting out, which is working for me at the minute. I, in all my wins, I've not been hurt or taken any big punches like I always. The only damage I've taken is my losses, my leg kicks. But other than that, I've taken no damage other than what I've done to myself with my blooming hand. That's, that's about it at the minute. So, yeah. I want some more experience, a couple more rounds under my belt. And then eventually move to pro and look at getting into cage warriors. Yeah. You've, have you put a lot of work into your training since that fight on checking them leg kicks? Yeah. Yeah. If you look, if you look at... Uh, my last fight, uh, I don't know if my fight with Jake Rundy's on YouTube or out yet, but he tried to kick my legs a few times. But yeah, we I just drilled in religiously because like I'm not fighting again until I can get out of the way of these because it's pointless. I'm just gonna have my legs legs kicked a bit. It wasn't even that. It was like I could check kicks and I could get out of the way of them. It was it was in inexperience. It was like over aggressive. I was just always had my weight over my front legs, so I couldn't check. And I want I was way too aggressive, so I was just walking on to like massive leg kicks. So it was more of like a, it didn't actually take long to fix. It was just like a, more of like a light bulb flashing thing. I was like, I just don't have to chase someone down like I'm trying to kill them. So yeah, I don't get hit with like, obviously I still do a bit, but way less than I used to. And I throw a lot of leg kicks now as well. Like in my last fight, I threw, threw quite a few leg kicks, heavy leg kicks. So it made me realize I was there because I was like going out into the third round. I was like legit catwalk. It was fine. I was like, I need to take him down. Uh, so yeah, but nah, for someone just, who's uh, for someone who's never felt one before, like yeah, including yeah, me, man, what what, what are they like? It's terrible. Like, it's not too bad in training when you've got shinies on, and like if you take a couple, it's not bad. But Alan Byron can kick hard. To be fair, he was kicking my legs pretty hard. But it was more it was more the fact that all my weight was on the leg when he was kicking it. It's not like my leg was light, so all my weight was on my front leg, and then it was getting kicked. So my knee was just buckling. I'm surprised I didn't do any like long time damage to my knee because my knee was so swollen and like my leg was getting kicked and my knee was just like bending inwards, like not a way it should bend. So, oh dear, <laughs> yeah. But, was he catching but, you in the knee then when he was kicking you or was it like on the calf? No, no, it was kicking my knee, it was kicking the knee. So, yeah, it's a good area to kick really. Like, if you kick the wrong bit, it can hurt you. Like, I hurt my foot a little bit kicking my last opponent's knee, but it definitely hurts them more than it does you. Yeah, so but yeah, props to him because now I just. Try not to get leg kicks, but man, my defense has got a lot better. But as I say, it was more just a tactical thing rather than like a skillful thing. Yeah, I uh, appreciate your chat to me, mate. I'm obviously looking forward to see. Yeah, hope your hand heals up and uh, yeah, get back in the octagon soon. Heal up and get back in there, but look, it'll probably be early next year. I'm looking at getting back in there, so yeah, I look forward to it.